Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY and we're on the 2021 KTM Duke 390 and hey, I promised you guys I was going to get a riding video. So, a riding video you shall get. Uh, we're using the GoPro Hero 9 Black Edition. We're on Super V right now with, I think, uh, Hyperboost 2.0, which is image stabilization turned on. That's electronic, so it crops out a little bit of the image, but uh, it makes it insanely smooth. I have my phone right here with the lav connected to it. I got this off of Amazon. I'll leave a link for it. Really, really awesome and rugged phone holder. I actually really like it, um, and it locks into place and everything. I also have this little side satchel down here, which is just like a cheap... Um, one from Walmart, but uh, other than that, the bike's completely stock. I only have a hundred, and I have one, two, three miles. Perfect for the video. Well, let's go ahead and start her up. So I haven't done a ton of testing um, with the audio. I, I already feel like there's going to be some audio peaking, so hopefully you guys can bear with that. Um, and there's probably going to be some wind noise. Uh, I do have, you know, a full face helmet, which you might be able to see in the mirror here, maybe. Um, and it's a, a LS2 helmet. It's a very nice helmet, uh, but of course it does not block out all of the wind noise because, you know, how would you do that? So yeah, this is the 2021 in the uh, gray and black. I actually did a full uh, walk around video. If you, anybody wants to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description down below uh, for that. But it's a pretty recent video. And I compare it to like the Duke, uh, K or KTM Duke 200, because I was gonna buy that, but after doing some more research and everything, I kind of just changed my mind. Um, but yeah, I won't be doing any like highway tests or anything here. Cause you know, for one, if we're being honest, this isn't really a great highway bike. It's not going to be the most comfy. Um, now it's a doable totally. It can definitely uh, hit the highways, you know, with, with, with really minimal issues. Um, but uh, top speed's a little over 100 miles an hour, you know, give or take, depending on if you're going downhill, uphill, your weight, um, the if you're going into headwind, you know, if you're crouching down or not. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of variables there, but um, it is a six speed manual, just like, uh, you know, many other bikes in the market. Uh, these start around $56.99 MSRP, which I think is a really great price for um, just a bike that looks this amazing with the trellis frame. I really like the trellis frame because it's extremely modular. Um, you can hook all kinds of like satchels and uh, really anything to it because it's very universal. You don't have to have like anything KTM specific. Now, of course, turn signals are pretty nice, uh, you know, just left and right, very basic. You do have to turn it off with each turn. so. It's not super fancy where it automatically clicks off with the turn or anything insane like that, uh, but it does work really well. You know, a lot of people will brag about how great the cornering is on these bikes, and uh, you know, it really is. They're they're really fun just to throw around corners. I'm not a you know super. This is my first street bike, so I'm not super experienced. I'm not you know leaning it till my knees almost scrape or anything crazy. I'm just you know a nice casual rider, um, and you know I, I enjoy it. It's it's really a lot of fun. Um, I found so far that I really like riding and like. Uh, duos or like group sessions. Um, a lot of only really gone with duos so far, but I don't know. I have a lot more fun when riding with people. Um, I have had my girlfriend in the back a few times, so yes, it can carry two passengers. It's designed for it. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not like the most comfy ride um, for both people. I mean, even for a single person, the seat's actually really nice for the price of the bike, but it's definitely not the most, you know, comfy ergonomic seat, but it's padded really well. It's really wide too for it being a smaller bike. Um, the rear passenger though gets their own pegs, their own, uh, you know, raised up seat. And, uh, you know, I've been told it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, with my girlfriend and I on here, you know, together, I'm sure we're, I don't know, somewhere close to 300 pounds. Um, we're both pretty, pretty light and pretty small individuals. So this bike's really perfect for us. Um, and obviously, you know, having the extra person does make uh, braking distance increase a little bit and you know your acceleration is a little bit harder but overall though it's really not too bad and this bike has a ton of low-end torque I mean I'm in fourth gear at 4,000 rpm and if I just pull back the throttle just a little bit even I mean this thing absolutely takes off uh, that's one of my most favorite parts about it honestly is you know it's a single cylinder so you get a lot of low-end torque um, so there's no really you know need to keep yourself in really high rpms um, to make sure that, you know, you can uh, speed up if need be and everything. The shifting's really smooth, too. I mean, it's, it's like butter. I mean, and it's really hard to mess up. You really don't even have to uh, press down all the way on the clutch as long as you time it right. I um, mean, it's smooth, you know, no grinding or anything. I, don't, I have not had any problems finding or grinding a gear once. I will say, finding neutral is a little bit difficult. Uh, you know, it's the typical... Uh, all the way down one half up um, and I'll try to do that this light here if I have time 
Uh, but yeah, it's definitely difficult to find neutral on this, in my opinion. I think I read some other people saying that, you know, they kind of had like the same issue where neutral just, it can be a little bit of a nuisance. Um, it's not the end of the world trying to find it, but definitely not fun. Oh, I think we already got a light, so I'm going to have to turn here, and I will not be able to show you neutral yet. Now, of course, I am on my 606-mile uh, break-in period that KTM basically requires in these bikes, which, you know, no biggie. Um, the bike's still plenty of fun, but um, I believe it changes the rev limiter and also the shift light. Um, and once that's up, you can't actually program the screen to be able to change the shift light. I don't know how programmable it really is, but I know right now it's not an option for me. And it tells me, hey, this is not an option uh, until you reach your 600-mile interval. Um, Yeah, it's a pretty nice uh, hot day out. I think it's close to 90 degrees. I'm sure the real feels like almost 100. Um, the sun's not too bad. It's actually pretty cloudy, as you can see. Uh, Humidity is freaking pretty bad today. I think it's like 80% right now, so very humid. And I'm wearing jeans and a um, hoodie, you know, for a little bit of added safety. But, um, you know, the good news is when you're, when you're really moving, the wind uh, really keeps you cool. It's not bad. Obviously at stoplights it's nice to uh, flip your visor up and everything so you don't bake in the sun. Yeah, even in fifth gear though, I mean you can see a 4000 RPM. I mean I don't think you guys can see the throttle, but I am only giving it like quarter throttle and I mean you get a ton, a ton of torque. I mean it's absolutely insane. Like I have not, and I don't know if it will happen anytime soon, but um, I have not gone like anywhere near full throttle uh, just because if I'm being honest I've, I'm not experienced with wheelies or anything but I feel like that'd be the way that I pop one and uh, I don't really want to find out that way so I'll keep it to like you know partial throttle um, until I'm much more experienced with the bike. Alright so I, I told you guys I'd find neutral so I'm in first gear see look like I try to do half up there alright there we go I got a second try that's not too bad Make sure the camera is still recording. Yep, we are indeed still recording, I believe. Hopefully the angle's still good. I mean, I guess I'll find out later when I go to edit this. Uh, the mirrors are really nice. Uh, I actually really like them. Um, obviously, you know, they're not the biggest mirrors or anything, but they do, uh, you know, kind of magnify objects and everything, so that's nice. But uh, I really do like the mirrors. I know a lot of people actually take these off or, like, replace them with shorter ones, but I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It's like a little, it's like bug antennas, <laughs> which I, I think it's kind of fun. Now, one thing I will say that you do get with the single cylinder, and I'm sure the 200s actually, I don't know, it might be worse, it might be easier, or better, since it's a smaller piston, but um, this thing's not the most fun at really low RPMs, and I, what I mean by that, because I know I earlier I was bragging about, like, oh, you don't need to be at a high RPM for it to go fast. Well, what I'm saying is, like, really low, like, you know, around idle, like, when you're trying to navigate through a parking lot, um, you almost have to stay, like, in first gear, unless you're going, like, over 12 miles an hour because it gets really like lumpy if that makes sense it's not like some of those uh two cylinder three cylinder four cylinder bikes where you know you have these pistons all firing at the same time so it's a very smooth bike um you know the rpm smooth all the way through with this one it, you got to remember it's a single cylinder you know they call them uh you know thumpers for a reason so or, or you know single single bangers you know um fellow biker and uh that's just uh part of the single cylinder life you know you just get a little bit of a lumpier, um, you know, idle and everything. Obviously, it's not not nearly as lumpy as a lot of like the twin cylinder Harleys and stuff like that, and single cylinder Harleys. This is a pretty quiet bike out of the factory. And, you know, it comes with a catalytic converter and everything too, so um, you know, you really don't see any smoke. And obviously, that acts even more like a muffler. Uh, but I really like the sound of this bike. I mean, it it's it's a good sounding bike. I mean, you can see that's only 6,000 RPM and. I think this thing maxes uh, somewhere between like 11 and 12,000 once it's like fully unlocked by KTM. So here we have a little bit of a, uh, kind of like a back road that's pretty nice with some corners and everything so we can uh, take it around some nice turns. These are definitely the nicest roads uh, for, for these bikes. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal uh, being able to just go around the turns and you don't have to worry about traffic or people pulling out in front of you. Because, uh, you know, as, as many people know or should know, you know, r riding bikes are pretty dangerous, you know, especially when you have all these uh, giant cars around you that uh, weigh 20 times what your bike does, you know. So 
you really do got to be um, careful. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I definitely recommend a really good helmet. Like I said, I really like this LS2 helmet. I'm planning on doing a video on my girlfriend and I's. Uh, we both got the, uh, I think it's the LS2 Assault. I don't know if it's like the 1 or the 2 or the 3. I really couldn't tell you, but... Um, I'll probably be doing a video soon on those. Uh, we just got really similar ones. Hers is just like a, a different like silver and mine's like a nice matte silver with some design on it. I really hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, if you want to see more about the bike and um, you know, a walk around, a startup, a rev, like a little bit of everything that's off the bike, I highly recommend checking out uh, that video that I made on this channel as well, like a month or so ago. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.